I have a problem. I get some of my best creative ideas when I'm lying in bed trying to fall asleep. Now, when I get one of these ideas, I get super excited. I start thinking about how I'm gonna make this project, how I want it to look, different design features that I wanna add. And before I know it, it's an hour later, I'm super hyped up and I'm nowhere near falling asleep. Now, I know if I were to just take a second and write down these ideas, I wouldn't feel so pressured to design the entire thing in my head because I wouldn't be worried that I would forget the idea before morning. But when I'm lying in bed with my eyes closed trying to fall asleep, the last thing I wanna do is turn on all the lights, find a sketchbook, write down the idea because all that's gonna do is wake me up even more. So I thought, what if there's a better way to record these ideas that I get while I'm lying in the dark? And that is exactly what we're gonna do today. I like to call this project the Dream Whiteboard, and it's basically a fancy glass backlit dry erase board. My original plan was to buy a piece of frosted glass, but by some stroke of good luck, I was taking out the trash one day behind my apartment, and I found this almost perfect piece of seven millimeter glass. Yes, I know there's a chip in one corner, but we'll deal with that later on. The other problem with this piece of glass was that it was still clear, and to fix that, I decided to try glass etching cream. This stuff is most commonly used with vinyl stencils to etch things like wine glasses, but you can also use it to frost entire pieces of glass. It's just a massive pain in the butt, as I soon realized. After giving the grainy, sulfur-smelling cream 15 minutes to work its magic, I rinsed it off in the sink and was a bit disappointed to find a splotchy piece of weakly frosted glass. I'm pretty sure I underestimated the importance of applying the cream in an even layer, and all of those splotches are areas where my brush strokes thinned out the cream. So I applied a second coat, spending a bit more time trying to spread everything into a uniform layer. This was very difficult to do with a small paintbrush without using an absurd amount of the pretty expensive cream. Oh, and did I mention that this stuff is super toxic? I'm pretty sure the sulfur smell is sulfuric acid literally burning the glass, so you definitely want to wear gloves, a mask, and safety glasses while you're using this stuff. If you couldn't tell yet, I would not recommend glass etching cream to frost a big piece of glass like this one. The second coat definitely improved things, but it was still blotchy and streaky, and if I were to do this project again, I think I would just use glass frosting spray paint and save this stuff for the custom wine glasses. Okay, enough messing around with glass, let's do some woodworking. I needed to cut a few pieces of plywood for the structure of the whiteboard, and I did this on a couple of sawhorses set up behind my car on one of the snowiest days in Toronto that we've had this year. Since I do most of my making inside my apartment, I try to be outside when I'm using power tools as much as possible. And you can't always control the weather when inspiration strikes. The back of the whiteboard is just a piece of half inch plywood cut to the same length and width as the piece of glass. I also cut four strips of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood to make the sides of the whiteboard. This will create a cavity just deep enough to hold the battery compartment as well as the lights. Once I was out of the snow and back in my warm apartment, I cut the strips to length with my Japanese pole saw. This is my go-to saw for apartment woodworking. It cuts super clean, super fast, and it's great for a huge variety of cuts. I'll put a link for this saw in the description, as well as links for all the other tools and materials I used in this project. But before we can put together the frame, we need to switch gears for a bit and make my favorite part of this project the automatic backlight. I didn't want the backlight to be too bright. Since I would be using it in the pitch dark, I didn't want to be blinded when it turned on. So I picked up a set of these battery powered fairy lights, which give off a really comfortable warm glow that isn't too intense. I wanted the backlight to turn on when I remove the dry erase marker and turn off when I put it back, ideally in such a way that I didn't have to fumble around too much in the dark. 
My first thought was a DIY magnet switch, but then I remembered the tilt switch in my Arduino kit. All this tilt switch really is, is a metal ball in a tube with two electrical contacts. So if you mount it vertically, you can also use it as a magnet switch. It's been a while since the last time I did any soldering, and I'm a bit out of practice, so I'll spare you the majority of my ugly soldering job and just tell you that it's not pretty, but it works. Luckily, these janky solder joints only had to see the light of day for a couple minutes before I hid them forever with some heat shrink tubing. Now that I could turn the lights on and off with a magnet, I needed a way to integrate a magnet into a dry erase marker. So I designed this super simple 3D printed sleeve that holds a rare earth magnet and fits over the barrel of a dry erase marker. The nice thing about this sleeve is I can change it over to another marker once the ink in this one runs out. With the backlight figured out, let's turn our attention back to the frame. Before putting the frame together, I drilled a hole through one of the long pieces to hold the magnet switch. I countersunk one side of the hole to give extra room for the wires. Finally, I was ready to assemble the frame. I've recently been loving the trick of using CA glue with activator in conjunction with wood glue. This method gives you a few seconds of working time to position your pieces, and then the activated CA glue clamps the pieces together while the wood glue dries. You just have to be really confident with your placement, because if you're not careful, the CA glue will grab before you're ready. But since my placements were not quite perfect, I had to do a little sanding to flush up the edges. In case you weren't aware, bathrooms make great sanding booths. Lots of hard surfaces that are easy to wipe down. Once I was done sanding, I laid the piece of frosted glass on the plywood frame, and honestly, I didn't really like how it looked. I love the look of the exposed plywood edges, but the bright unstained plywood behind the frosted glass just looked messy, and I realized that dyeing it black would make it look a lot cleaner, and with the lights create this really cool effect. So I taped off the edges and dyed the face and inside of the frame with India ink. India ink dries super fast, so it only took about an hour of drying before it was ready to finish with two coats of Verithane diamond wood finish in crystal clear semi-gloss. The finish will pick up some of the pigment on the first coat, so it's important to pour your finish into a separate container to avoid contaminating the whole can. I also left the painter's tape on at this step so that I wouldn't get any black drips on my exposed plywood edges. After finishing the edges with three coats of the diamond wood finish, I was finally ready to put everything together. Since the battery compartment would be partially visible through the frosted glass, I covered it in black electrical tape so it would blend in a little better. Then I used my hot glue gun to attach the battery compartment and fairy lights to the plywood backer board. I also used hot glue to install the magnet switch. On its own, the switch doesn't have a strong enough magnetic attraction to hold the marker in place, so I poked it through a steel washer to create a reliable magnetic docking point. The last thing I wanted was the marker falling off the frame in the middle of the night. And now we can finally address that chip in the corner of the glass. I decided to 3D print a simple cover to go over the chip and turn it into an asymmetric design feature. I also 3D printed some washers from the same filament to use in the other three corners and sort of tie the overall aesthetic together. Finally, I was ready to attach the glass, shiny side out, with some pan head screws.
The only thing left to do was mount the whiteboard next to the bed in our new apartment. I did this with command picture hanging strips, which are a super handy way of mounting stuff to the wall without having to drill holes. These are basically a super strong Velcro attached to 3M adhesive, so unlike normal command strips, you don't have to worry about leaving the pull tab exposed. And with that, the dream whiteboard was done. It's not often that you get to make something that allows you to be more creative. In a perfect world, I could choose to get all my best ideas when I'm wide awake in the middle of the day. But you know what they say, if you can't beat them, join them. The fact that I can now seamlessly turn over in bed in the middle of the night and write down what's running through my head is really exciting. And I don't know about you, but I have some of my most vivid dream recollections when I wake up in the middle of the night. So this will be a great way to record those as well. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed and checked out some of my other videos. I love to make and invent all sorts of stuff. And if you want to see what I'm up to in between videos, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day, or night.